Hey, it's Kev from Blender Binge. In today's video, we're going to be going over bump mapping and displacement mapping inside of Blender. Ready? Let's go. The first thing I want to do is actually give you something to look at. So I'm going to go ahead and create a UV sphere and I'm going to go ahead and say generate UVs. Okay, this just is going to make our life easier in this video. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that and then I'm going to give this guy a material. So if you haven't watched my videos on UV texturing or materials, they're on this channel and I highly recommend watching them. But for those who have watched it or are more advanced, um, this is going to make a lot more sense soon. So what I'm going to do first is give this guy a shader. So I'm going to go over here to this materials tab and I'm going to hit new. And I'm just going to let it be it. I'm going to let it sit at diffuse shader for now. This diffuse BSDF. This is fine. Okay. I'm going to go ahead, zoom in a little bit, and what I want to do now is I'm going to change this to uh, my rendered view. All right, and it's just kind of grayed out now, so I'll, I'll leave it at that. And I'm going to go ahead and give this guy a color. So to do that, all right, I'm, let me pull this out a little bit more so you can see this. Underneath color over here, okay, I'm, I'm under the material, color. All right, the easiest way is to just click on this little button here and just say image texture. And that plugs in an image texture into here. You can also shortcut hit shift A in here and you can choose a whole bunch of things. So you, you could go to texture and then say image texture from here. Okay, and that drops in the same thing and then you just go and connect it. Okay, but we did it the easy way, so I'm not going to worry. And it makes it magenta. Okay, magenta, if you see stuff in your scene later on that is magenta and you didn't put magenta there, that usually means that, that if you're using Cycles Render, that tells you that there's no image or map applied to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a map. So I'm going to say I made a map, a little PNG called Rock. And now you see that I have this rock wrapped around my sphere. And it's kind of not doing much. It just kind of looks like, like a rock wrapped around a sphere, but the edges are still smooth, and, but the image is on there. So what I could also do here is under Vector, okay, Image Texture, I click on that. Under Vector, I can choose UV. So I hit that little button, and I choose UV. All right, doesn't really make a difference because the thing's mapped correctly anyway. But that just keeps things keeps things clean. So what I want to do is show you how to make this bumpy. See this little thing called displacement? If I go ahead and I'm gonna inside this window, I hit Shift A. Okay, and I go to vector and I say bump. Alright. I have this little bump node. And what I can do is I'm just gonna connect this. So I'm gonna click left click on this little button here, okay, and it drags out this little stringy noodly thing, and I'm going to plug it into displacement, okay, it kind of locks in there, right, when you feel it lock in, you just let go, and it's in there, and nothing changes yet, because we haven't told it what we want to use, so what I can do is I can take this and plug it into here, so what I'll do is I'll go ahead, and just for the purpose of, of this video, just going to go ahead from color and I'm going to drag this into normal. And that makes it appear a little more bumpy, like it's reacting to whatever light is in the scene. Now the best way to do that would not be what I just did, but I just wanted to show you that really quickly. The best way would be to make a copy of this. So control C for copy, control V for paste. Okay, so you make a, a whole other version of this, okay, a duplicate. And you plug this into normal. And then I can plug UV, okay, I can use the same mapping and use plug UV into vector, okay. And then the most important thing that I do here is this one is the color, okay, this is color. This one is not color. We're using basically the black and white image, okay, the black and white pixels to fake bumpiness on this surface. So I'm going to change this, and uh, let me zoom in here a little bit better so you can see this. I'm going to change this from color to non-color data. 
Okay, that's just going to make this work a lot nicer. So you can see now with bump on there, okay, or if I take bump off, okay, it looks a little more uh, non bumpy. Okay, I plug in bump, boom. Now it looks a little more like it's reacting to light. So let me go ahead and show you this even better. I'm going to go back to solid. I'm just going to drop some lights in the scene. All right, right now I have this lamp. I don't like the lamp. I'm going to delete it. And I'm going to create a few more lights. So I'm going to go ahead and say point light. Okay. And I'll pull that up over here. Okay, control C, control V. Pull that back there. Maybe put it in the background a little bit. Control C, control V. Copy and paste. And I'll pull this guy out here a little bit. So it's kind of in the front. Okay, it doesn't really matter. I'm just doing this for illustrative purposes. And if I go back here to rendered, see now it looks better. Okay, I'm getting more light. And I can change the color of my light here too, just to kind of give it a better, more pronounced look for you. Okay. I'll just do this. Okay, so you can see here that we're reacting to light. All right. See, it's giving us kind of false shadow. Now, this isn't the best way. Okay, bump maps are really quick and dirty way of making your 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 texture look bumpy, but it's getting it's getting pretty old pretty fast. All right. It, it's it's a decent way. It's a decent fake, and it renders fast, but it's not the best way of making this look bumpy. All right. You can you can play with strength here. Okay, strength at zero, strength at one. You can invert the look, but it's not really giving you much to work with. Okay, it's not. It's not great. We have another thing we can use here, called displacement. Now, displacement is actually going to take this map and force out the geometry. It's actually going to change the look of my sphere. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to go ahead and with this still on, okay, bump, displacement, all right, I'm going to, I messed with this, so I'm just going to go ahead and add in a new bump, okay, vector bump, displacement, color to normal, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to alter Blender's interface just a little bit, so I'm going to change a setting here. I'm going to go to this render tab, okay, and I'm going to change feature set from supported to experimental. And then, okay, I'm going to go, let me go to solid here so we can see this. I'm going to give this guy a subdivision surface modifier. So to do that, I go over to this little wrench icon, add modifier, and I'm going to say subdivision surface. All right. And then I'm going to change this. This is key right here. Okay. The first key to doing this is changing this to experimental. The second key to doing this is changing subdivision surface here to adaptive. Okay. Now if I go to render. you're going to see absolutely nothing changes. The reason for that, okay, this is still the same. One last thing I need to do, and that is to go over here to this materials tab, go down to where it says settings, and change that from displacement, and you're going to watch the magic happen right before your eyes, from bump to both. I'm just going to say both for now. And look what happens. Whoa. Look at that. This is actually subdividing your, 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 uh, your sphere. And it is pushing out polygons. And it is creating a very crazy displaced effect. Pretty crazy. Okay. 
Without getting too technical, this is called micropolygon displacement. And adaptive meaning that where there's more data and, and, and more kind of bumpiness, it will push that out and it'll subdivide based on that. And where there's less bumpiness, it'll subdivide less. So it actually renders a lot faster because it's taking up less computer resources. Okay, I don't want to go too deep into that, into the technicals there. I just want to show you how this works. So that actually lets you displace your geometry into a true displacement. See, if I turn off this displacement, I turn it back to bump, yeah, it looks bumpy. All right, but you could see that the, the edges here are still really smooth. So this kind of looks like it's, you know, displaced a little bit, but this is smooth, okay? Change this to, oops, to both here. And now it's taking this data, okay, and it's forcing it into displacement and blowing it all out. So this is really cool for making rocks, making a whole bunch of different things. So one other thing I want to show you is that Let's just say I disconnect displacement here, okay? It's still showing you displacement when it renders. I don't exactly know why this happens, but the fix to this is just hitting, okay, put your mouse in this window and hit tab a couple of times, or once or twice, okay? And it resets the view. Don't know why, just one of those quirky things, just no, okay? Tab, we'll get rid of that. If I plug this back into displacement, See that? It gives it the bump, but it doesn't, it doesn't show you the displacement. Again, hit tab. Okay. Again, don't know why. It's one of those things. Just do it. All right. Now, say I want to control how much of a uh, displacement I'm getting. I can go ahead and drop uh, some kind of control node in here. All right. Because strength, if you see here, strength, it doesn't do much. All right, but it, I can control it by just dropping in a node in here, okay, between the texture and the bump and tell it alter, okay, take this image and before it hits bump, alter it somehow. So if I hit shift A, I can use uh, a, num a number of different things, but I'll go ahead and use RGB curves because it's probably what most of you are used to in Photoshop. Mm. And with this, I can go ahead and if I take this down, a little dot here and pull it down, all right, that will start controlling this. Now naturally, again, here we go with the tab thing again. Go here, hit tab, and you see it starts, it starts lessening that, okay? Put it up, hit tab, you're getting more displacement. Put it up a little more, hit tab, there you go. So this is a good way of controlling. Go all the way to zero, hit tab. Displacement's almost gone. Okay, there's nothing. It's taking this and kind of making it all dark and black and it basically turning it to zero before it hits this. So it takes the effect away. Whereas if you push it up, okay, there you go. You're getting it again. And this side, let's see if this does anything. I don't know if it will. Okay, so it just normalizes it to white. Okay, white pixels come out, black pixels stay put. So if I push this all the way up, it's just going to go ahead and take this entire volume and think that everything is white and push it all out evenly. Push this down. I have now black over here, white up here, and I get that difference. Does that make sense? Okay, so, so pixels with zero value being black stay at the surface. Pixels with white push it out. And the reason I'm using a 32-bit image here is because it has a lot more data between, between uh, the darks and the lights. Now, it's a little, little too much for this video. This is kind of a basics video. But I like to, when I go into Photoshop, I like to create 16 or 32-bit versions of the bump maps because I find that it gives me a, a nicer displacement. But that's for more advanced stuff. For now, just you can plug almost anything into here and use it as a displacement. Okay, so to reiterate, what we did was we set up this little node tree here, okay, we, we created a sphere, then we gave it a shader, a diffuse shader, all right, and then we gave it an image texture, 
for color. You don't have to, okay? This doesn't, you don't have to have this color. But yeah, then you probably don't see much. So I would just leave it as this, okay? And you can take this off and just have white. It, it doesn't, it doesn't matter, okay? I can take this and make it blue. I didn't have to put this color in there. I just did it because it looks cooler for the video. All right. But that's how I plug it back in. And there I have it, okay? So what we did then is we just duplicated this image texture and we used this as our bump map, okay? And then we added this little bump node, okay? And then we plugged it into displacement. And then we changed this from color to non-color data, okay? Non-color data. And we get a bump map. To change it to displacement, what we did was we went over to this render tab, we changed feature set to experimental, okay? And then we went to add modifier and we put a subdivision surface modifier on here. And if you didn't click, if you didn't click experimental, when you go to subdivision surface, you wouldn't have adaptive there. So you have to make sure, okay, if you're not seeing this adaptive here, it's because you're, you're not in feature set experimental. So you want to make sure that you're there and then you get adaptive. Okay. You, you click adaptive. And then the last thing we did to make it all work was went over to our materials tab. We went all the way down here to settings and we changed displacement from bump to both. And then boom, we got this really cool displacement. There's a lot more you can do with this. And it can be used for terrains or characters. If you want to put scales on your character, all sorts of cool stuff. Okay. And it actually deforms the geometry. You can see that this, this edge is not smooth anymore. It's actually changed this object. If you got anything out of this, please hit like and subscribe. Okay. The comments are open. If you have issues, I'll, I'll try to help you there. You know, if I don't get back to you right away, it's because I haven't seen the comment yet, but I, I do tend to get back to everybody who comments. Again, hit subscribe and hit that little bell notification and you'll be notified of other videos I make. And uh, I'll just keep making more. Okay? Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye.